Welcome to our YouTube channel, Easy Tech Support. And in today's video, we'll be talking about how to do classification. It's about satellite image classification with the use of Google Earth Engine and also the various classifiers that are defined with the various API in the Google Earth Engine. So you can explore through lots of videos that have already been put here. Uh, so you can learn Google Earth Engine. Also find the, this kind of a blog post. Here you can also find the codes. So you can try these codes on your own. So coming to our today's topic, it's about the classification. So while well, uh, doing the image classifications, that is usually the satellite image classification. Here in this example, you can see that uh, the various land cover, as you know that it's a physical characteristics of the earth surface. So that kind of classification, whether certain area is covered with the urban area or it's a uh, a forest area or it's a agriculture land that kind of a classification so here you can see in the layer panel that i have produced the land cover classification with the random forest and also that it uh, it has been done with a car classifier that is classification and regression uh, so here also we have done the same with the k-means classifier and if we just turn it off then you can see this landsat imagery okay so our objective of this tutorial is to do the land cover classification with the pixel based classification so how we can do the pixel based classification so pixel based classifications can be done with the process of supervised classification or unsupervised classification the basic step is the unsupervised classification that do the clustering okay so it will be cluster clustering certain uh, pixel area on one of the class and or another kind of a cluster would be defining another kind of class okay so that kind of a classifications is done with the unsupervised classification and for the supervised classification we'll be defining the training sample we do know the training samples okay so here with the help of this geometric tool as you can see here i have defined the forest samples of 25 points so you can see here uh, let me just toggle this off so you can see here okay this point these points are representing my forest cover okay so you can see it here um, this is going to load my landsat image and you can see this area is a forest area okay uh, similarly we have defined the 25 uh, forest samples and also i have defined the water samples uh, and also I, here you can see the build up are also defined the cultivation land are also defined the snow uh, are also defined so on the basis of these sample data these are the known sample data. You can also define um, your own GPS location data. If you have the GPS location data that you have collected in the field, those GPS data can also be utilized to do the supervised classification. So supervised classification is all about that you do have the training sample points uh, that you have collected in the field or you are going to define uh, on the map itself. With the help of these satellite images, you can also uh, uh, turn this on the satellite image on the basis of this satellite image you can define your training samples okay so these are the these are the basic differences between these two unsupervised classification and the supervised classification now let's just go through the codes okay so first step is all about defining the satellite imagery that we are uh, interested in okay this can be sentinel to image as well okay so sentinel image has the resolution of a 10 meter which is quite good in comparison to the landsat so here i'm defining the landsat uh, imagery landsat uh, with the image collection and i'm interested on this region of interest this region of interest is defined by my own asset okay and also we are defining the date uh, as we are more interested for 2023 so from the january 1 to uh, here you can see for the july 31 okay so i am filtering it and also i am more interested in uh, the image that has a less cloud cover okay and on the basis of a same i will be uh, i will be calculating the medium of this image collection so that i can have a particular image for this location okay so i'll be clipping that image to my region of interest so here i am displaying that image okay i am interested to display the rgb band this is the red band and this is the green band and this is the blue band okay so i am defining the minimum and maximum value and i am also defining the layer name as a landsat 8 median okay so you can see it here uh, so here is my landsat 8 image okay so after that i will now be uh, obviously centering my object uh, to my region of interest with this code and now i am also defining the bagmati province uh, uh, save file okay so i have also defined the bagmati province save file as you can see 
it here. Okay, so this is the Bagmati province sapphire. First of all, we'll be doing the unsupervised classification. For doing this unsupervised classification, I'll be defining the samples and extracting the values for the training. Okay, so I'll be defining the variable called sample unsupervised. That would be selecting these bands. Okay, I'm particularly interested in these bands. Okay, I have also defined it here that band 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. I'll be particularly interested in those bands and I would be uh, extracting the samples okay with the dot sample and uh, for, for this dot sample I will be defining the reason is reason of interest and I will be defining the scale as a 30 as you know that Landsat 8 resolution is 30 meter okay for the pixels that would be making the samples would be 250 and I'm also uh, defining the tile scale 8 okay so that it can be easier to do the computations and uh, avoid the errors due to the computation okay so on this unsupervised classification as we know that uh, the pixels with similar properties similar uh, spectral uh, properties they are grouped together that are that are clustered together uh, so here i have defined the five classes for the cluster okay i am now going to train my uh, input image that is landsat 2023 with the cluster is defined by clusterer k okay i have now I made the clustering and I have also classified so I want to display that classified map here with this code okay and I also can do and visualize with the random visualizer or I can simply define the minimum and the maximum and also going to define uh, give some uh, palettes okay so that can uh, give some sense of meanings to my map okay so as you can see it here this is my k means output okay so as you can see it here this red is the urban area so here you can see that this green is the forest area similarly this white are the snow area and others okay so there are five classes defined uh, so on the basis of a, uh, these kind of a palettes or with a random visualizer uh, it is uh, quite different here you can see the random visualizer okay so it is uh, doing the visualizations with its own random colors okay so it is not going to address some cartographic standards so that we are going to define uh, the palettes that is going to give some sense to our map so let's move for uh, move towards the supervised classification for the supervised classifications uh, with the geometry tools i have defined my training samples okay so how to define this training sample let me just walk you through that i am going to define the new layer so here you can see that new layer with the name geometry has been defined here so i am going to go to the setting and here i am going to define it as maybe park okay so i am just defining it randomly so in this input is i i want to define it as a feature collection okay so i also have to define the property so i have defined it as a lands lc land cover and i have given the value okay so earlier i have defined the five classes from 0 1 2 3 4 okay so now my new lc would be 5 and also i can give the color the so the part would be like this okay uh, maybe like green okay so this is how this park you can see it here if i click it here then you can see it highlighted okay and on the basis of the same, I can go to some of the areas. So you can see it here. These are some of the park in the Kathmandu. So you can see it here. This is Ratna Park. Uh, okay, I'm going to click it here. Okay, so this is going to be one point. Okay, one training sample. You can say it like that. Okay, so if I have to define it further, uh, let me just, uh, this is Tinkune Park. So I can click it here. So you can see that it is increasing. Okay, now there are two points. Okay. Uh, similarly, you can do it, uh, do it more. Here it is. It has been imported. Okay. Earlier there was the forest, water body, built up area, cultivation land, snow, and here you can see, you can notice that the park also has been added here. Okay. So these are the import uh, imported tools uh, that has been defined with the geometry tools or with your own assets. Okay. So this is how in supervised classification we are going to define our own samples, or you can simply import also like uh, we imported the assets for the Bagmati province but uh, these need to be classified okay uh, classified means that you need to define this property so here you can see that lc has been defined the value is zero okay similarly if you uh, if you go further uh, you can see it here water body so this is lc value of one okay so similarly the built up is two cultivation land is three snow is four and park is five okay 
now we have this kind of a training data but we want to merge them into one okay so we want to define them as a one so this samples known uh, variable has been defined that is going to merge the forest data with the water body built up uh, and also the cultivation land also the snow and if we are interested then we can also add the park here okay so here uh, as you will know that that we have defined the properties as C. So I just want to define a variable called label. Okay. Now we do have the training samples. So we want to extract uh, the spectral signature in those particular points. Okay. So if you just uh, uh, click here in this inspector, and I just want to click it here. Here you can see that and the b1 value is this one b2 value is this one b3 value is this one similarly b4 b5 b6 so this kind of a value need to be extracted and this would be done with the sample regions okay also uh, we can do the accuracy assessment it's all about the accuracy how much accurate is our classification map is very important for doing various analysis uh, for the confidence level whether the classification map is correct or not so for the, uh, for that particular region we are now also uh, going to define the training samples and the validation sample so on the basis of these 125 uh, training points we are now defining uh, the 70 percent is 70 percent of those 125 points is a training samples and also we are defining the 30 percent remaining 30 percent is the validation sample so that we can do the accuracy assessment so we do have here you can see that uh, for these supervised classifications there are various classifiers that are available to us also for the unsupervised there are also various clusters that are available to us but for this particular examples we are now focusing on the cat okay so it is about the classification and regression trees uh, so this classification and regression tree can be done with simple cat okay you can uh, go through the documents over here and by searching the various classif uh, classifier that is available in our api you can learn much more about uh, the various classifier or the clusters that are available to us for doing the classification so for this classification you can see that we can do this uh, with a simple random forest as well and also the simple card okay so there are here are various parameters that need to be considered okay so uh, coming back to our point uh, uh, so with this simple cut and here we are defining the features as the training samples okay uh, so we do have now 70 percent of our sample supervised is the training samples so that uh, are considered here and also the class property that we have earlier defined as the lc and later we have stored the same in the variable called label that properties are being called upon here and also the input properties are the bands okay on the basis of this classifier card we are now going to train our image that is landsat ls 2023 image and we are particularly interested in these kind of bands that was defined earlier and also we have defined the palettes for the visualization it has been classified with the classifier card so on the basis of the same we want to do the visualization for that particular classified card 2023 is uh, defined here okay so on the basis of the same we have uh, we have now successfully done the classification with the cart okay and also we can do the uh, accuracy assessment for the uh, for the same we are now define going to define the confusion matrix so you can also learn about the confusion matrix uh, from the documents okay so here you can see that e dot confusion matrix and on the basis of same you can uh, find out the accuracy array consumer accuracy kappa coefficient and producer accuracy and others okay so on the basis of the same here you can see that the predicted value uh, after the classification is done this uh, classification uh, label would be new that is going to be defined and uh, on the basis of this classification and lc the comparison of the same we can also be, uh, also find out the matrix okay we can also find out the overall ac accuracy and also the kappa coefficient can be calculated and similarly if we want to do the random forest classifier uh, with uh, we can do the same with the simple random forest and here you can see that we have defined the decision tree as 100 okay so this can be changed to 50 or whatever samples that you are going to consider and here we are going to train with our training samples and the class properties as a label and input properties are the bands that we are particularly interested in and in this particular code we have now classified our ls 2023 with the classifier random is defined here okay so on the basis of the same we have done the classification and we want to now visualize our classification data and here also we have done the accuracy assessment and here we have find the overall accuracy for the random forest kappa coefficient uh, on this particular code 
Finally, we can now run this code. And uh, so here you can see, this is the uh, Landsat 8 image that has been displayed. And uh, also the Bagmati province uh, has been displayed. We successfully displayed the land cover uh, with the K-means, okay? And also the land cover with the card classifier and the land cover with the random forest classifier. And in this console, you can see that uh, we have successfully run our code. The confusion matrix for the card can be, can be visualized here. And also the overall accuracy of the card is 0.58. That is 58% uh, accuracy has been gained here. And Kappa coefficient of 46% has been obtained. And also the confusion matrix for the random forest overall accuracy Kappa coefficient has been displayed here. Okay, so we can increase our accuracy by densifying the training samples and also considering the various indices uh, that are available to us like NDVI for improving the accuracy of a vegetation and also the NDVI, the built-up index uh, can also be considered so that we can uh, easily differentiate and classify accurately the urban area. We'll be talking about object-based classification in our next tutorial and also we'll be considering how to increase the accuracy of our particular a classification map in our next tutorial so stay tuned these tutorials these codes will be provided to you in this uh, particular blog post of tech guru guides so stay tuned to our channel easy tech support please like comment and subscribe uh, also uh, let us know what you want to learn more in this google earth engine so stay tuned bye bye